Let's go. And you will see. boy today this thursday the 24th day of march 2022 and a call is going out to you today that you should humble yourself before god who are you anyway that you would not want to humble yourself before god because if you do not then you will be humbled remember the story of king herod he chose not to humble himself before god and then he was eaten up by worms and I'm sure you also remember the story of King Nebuchadnezzar who felt so pumped up and would not humble himself before God because he was thrown amongst the beasts and fed amongst the beasts for a while before God restored him. I pray you won't have to go through such experiences, but you need to humble yourself before God. We have a very long passage to read today because it's the entirety of the 10th chapter of Exodus, so we need to fly. Then... The Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I may show these signs of mine among them, and that you may tell in the hearing of your son and of your son's son how I have made sport of the Egyptians and what signs I have done amongst them, that you may know that I am the Lord. Moses and Aaron went in to Pharaoh and said to him, Thus says the Lord, the Lord God of he the Hebrews, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go, that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow I will bring locusts into your country, and they shall cover the face of the land, so that no one can see the land, and they shall eat what is left to you, and after the hill, they shall eat every tree of yours which grows in the field, and they shall fill your houses and the houses of all your servants and all of the Egyptians, as neither your fathers nor your grandfathers have seen from the day they came on earth to this day. Then he turned and went out from Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's servant said to him, How long shall this man be a snare to us? Let the man go that they may serve the Lord their God. Do you know, do you not yet understand that Egypt is ruined? So Moses and Aaron went, were brought back to Pharaoh, and he said to them, Go serve the Lord your God, but who are to go? And Moses said, We will go with our young and our old, will go with our sons and our daughters, with our flocks and herds, for we must hold a feast to the Lord. And he said to them, Then the Lord be with you. If ever I let you and your little ones go, look, you have some evil purpose in mind. No, go the men amongst you and serve the Lord, for that is what you desire. And they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the land of Egypt, for the locusts that they may come upon the land of Egypt, and eat every plant in the land, all that the hail has left. So Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt, 
and the Lord brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind had brought the locusts, and the locusts came up over all the land of Egypt and settled on all the whole country of Egypt. Such a dense swarm of locusts as had never been before, nor ever shall be seen again. For they covered the face of the whole land, so that the land was darkened. And they ate all the plants in the land, and all the fruit of the trees which the hail had left. Not a green thing remained, neither tree nor plant of the field, through all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron in haste and said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now, therefore, forgive my sin, I pray you, only this one, and entreat the Lord your God only to remove this death from me. So he went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And the Lord turned a very strong west wind which lifted the locusts and drove them into the Red Sea. Not a single locust was left in all the country of Egypt. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he did not let the children of Israel go. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand towards the heaven that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt a darkness to be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand towards heaven, and there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days, and they did not see one another, nor did any rise from his place for three days. But all the people of Israel had light where they dwelt. Then Pharaoh called Moses and said, Go serve the Lord. Your children also may go with you, only let your flocks and your herds remain behind. But Moses said, You must also let us have sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Our cattle also must go with us. Not a hoof shall be left behind, for we must take of them to serve the Lord our God. And we do not know with what we must serve the Lord until we arrive there. But the Lord had in Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. Then Pharaoh said to him, Get away from me. Take heed to yourself. Never see my face again. For in the day you see me, face to face you shall die. Moses said, As you say, I will not see your face again. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. These are the eighth and the ninth plagues. And in each of these situations, Moses will still harden his heart and will still not let the people go. He will not humble himself before God. And there were consequences, unfortunate ones, unpalatable ones, that came upon the king Pharaoh himself, that came upon his entire palace, that came upon the entire land of Egypt and all of the people there. I pray for you that God will give you humility that you will be able to overcome temptations to be haughty, temptations to think you amount to anything that you truly do not amount to because all of us are nothing before God. In fact, the Bible tells me that without God, we can do nothing. So why don't you humble yourself before God and recognize that at the snap of a finger, he can just take you away from the earth completely. So, you are one of the rulers of your land. You are one of the big people in government, whether in the judiciary or in the legislature or in the executive. And you are one of those that have authority over the rest of the people. And you are supposed to make things easy for the people. You are supposed to let some people go to serve their Lord but you make life difficult for them. I tell you what, choosing not to be humble before God will make you face consequences that will reduce you to absolutely nothing. 
you don't want that to happen to you, then humble yourself before God. And for you, you don't yet know the Lord, the God of the people of Israel and of the generations of those who cry, Abba, Father, the Lord God of those that are called by the name of Jesus, you yet do not know him, then how can you be humble to one that you yet do not know? So I want to invite you now so that you get to know him and so that you can also imbibe that humility that will make things go well with you so that you can be humble before God and God will be able to exalt you. That's what Jesus did. Jesus did not think it robbery to be equal to God, but he humbled himself even to death, the death on the cross. And because of that, God gave him a name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, all knees should bow of things in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. So you've seen the situation of those who did not, of King Pharaoh and his people who did not humble themselves before God. You've also heard the story of Jesus who humbled himself completely before God, even when it was difficult for him to take a particular cup of sorrow. He said, nevertheless, let your will be done. I want to invite you right now to know that King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one that you need to humble yourself before, wants you to get to know Jesus, God the Son, so that you can have the Holy Spirit working within you to teach you humility before God the Father. Are you ready for that experience? Then say this prayer after me. Say, Lord God, I come to you right now. I pray that you give me that spirit of humility before you so that from today you may forgive my sinful past, rewrite my story, let my life be turned around so that humility may attend to my situation and therefore you may also exalt me. I pray, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. If you said that prayer, welcome into the kingdom. Find a Bible believing church around you. Like I always say, if you find an Anglican church, that would be a nice place for you to learn more of humility before God. And the ultimate, like I always say, is if you happen to be in Oshobu, come to the Anglican Church of Rukia State Extension and it will be well with you because you learn humility. You will be humility personified and God is going to exalt you the way he exalted Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior. So all of us together, let's say this prayer now. Say, oh Lord, please remove any spirit of pride and stubbornness in me. Create in me a humble and willing heart today and always I pray in Jesus' name. So go out today, recognize that you need to humble yourself before God and it will be well with you as you do that in Jesus' name. God bless you. I judge you faithful.